Guardian angels are angelic beings assigned to protect and guide a particular person. Belief in tutelary beings can be found throughout all antiquity. Do you believe you have a guardian angel? Does he or she or it guide you or protect you in times of critical choices or maybe even help you with the mundane? Some people describe having a guardian angel as a feeling a premonition or a vision, or maybe even a psychic ability. It's that little tingling on the back of your neck or the top of your arms that you just can't seem to shake. It's the feeling you get when you're thinking about someone and they call you, or when you decide to take another route home only to find there was an accident on the way you usually travel. Or maybe you're looking for a new house and you feel drawn to a certain place. That's where we find Mr. and Mrs. Fielding, searching for a new place to live and finding a place, like one near Bell Manor. Welcome to Socially Distant Main Street Mysteries. I'm home. You call this home? Well, it won't be for long because listen, Henry. Listen to what? That train goes by every second, every minute, every hour, every day. Henry, listen. It's right on cue. Listen to it. I swear, Lucy, if I have to live here another minute, I'm going to go crazy. I thought the same thing, but... From now on, Mr. Fielding, my dear, my darling Mr. Fielding, it won't be necessary. Are you kidding? Nope. You know I've talked to so many real estate agents and read mm -hmm. so many house listings. And after all that, what's it got us? What's it got me? Darling, it's got you me. And I've told you more than once that I'm psychic. And now I know I am. It's not that again. I am, and I can prove it. What? Your good old guardian angel has found us a nice, quiet little place in the country that we can actually afford. That's exactly what I mean. Because listen, Henry, listen very carefully now. <sighs> Lucy, I have told you a thousand times, you can't seriously believe all of this superstitious stuff. I mean, this guardian angel mumbo jumbo junk, you gotta stop. It's not junk. My guardian angel looks after me and I'm sure of it now. <sighs> you are. Yes, because look at this newspaper. It's the Sentinel. So, because you bought a newspaper? Because you went to the store and bought an actual newspaper, you think that makes you psychic? Yes. A few minutes ago, as I was leaving the supermarket, there was something, something, some strange feeling, some intuition or something that made me reach out and grab this paper. It made me, Henry. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> So, you're psychic. Do you see us having dinner tonight? I am, I must be. Because look, look here on the real estate page. You know I've seen them all. Not this one. Henry, listen. Small six room colonial cottage on the edge of Bell Manor. Are you kidding? You know good and well we can't afford a place like that. I mean, Bell Manor? Will you please listen? Excellent condition, inspected, fully insured, two bed, one bath. And have they dared to put a price on a place like that? Wait, large living area, brick fireplace built on garage, full half acre plot, perfect for a young couple anxious to get away from the noise and grime of the city. And if this isn't exactly what we've been looking for. Sure, of course it is. But a place like that would be, I don't know what, 300,000? That's just it. It's 115,000. See for yourself. 
Right there, it's 115,000. Huh. Well, there it is, right? Right there in black and white. It's a dream come true. And all because of that inexplicable feeling and my guardian angel. There's something wrong with it. A place like that, for that price, in this market? No. But we're at least going to look into it, aren't we? Honey. But we have to, because of the way we found out about it. Because of the way that feeling made me buy this particular paper to find this particular ad. You mean your good old guardian angel? Please don't kid me about it. <sighs> okay, all right, look. We'll go see it. All right, what have we got to lose, right? Who's the agent? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Here it is. Her name is Strickler. Nora Strickler. All right. I'll call him in the morning. Thank you for calling her. <laughs> and listen, if there's nothing wrong with it, if there's nothing wrong with it, then maybe I'll admit that you're a psychic. These pictures, Henry, isn't it lovely? Gorgeous, isn't it? Yes, but when were these pictures actually taken, Mrs. Strickler? It's Ms. Strickler. Took it myself just the other day, Mr. Fielding, as soon as we got the place for a listing. It's no wonder we've had so many calls on it already. And we can't argue with this appraisal on it. That's right, Miss Fielding. The bank wouldn't dare lie about the place. I just don't understand the price. I mean, it's so low. Can you explain that? Well, it's on the outskirts of Bell Manor. Real country. Farm country. That's what I like about it. <laughs> but it has gas and water and electricity all ready to use. And while there's no cell phone service, of course, <laughs> What I mean is, you have to dial the operator every time you need to use the phone. You have to call the operator? How quaint! Yes. Darling, this is it. Yeah, I guess it is. Oh, thank you. Now do you believe me? <laughs> yeah, anything you say. <laughs> Believe what, Miss Fielding? Oh, well, Miss Strickler, you must oh, know that- Pay no attention to my wife. She, she's just a little superstitious. <laughs> I think she's psychic, is all. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say psychic? Well, what's wrong, Miss Strickler? <clears throat> huh? Oh, nothing. Uh, like your husband says, nothing at all. It's just that the, the last folks in the house, <laughs> well, you know how it is. The noises some folks can't quite understand out there in the country. Like the tree branches hitting on the roof when the wind blows. And the screech of an owl in the dead of the night when capturing its prey. Well, now, let me tell you two lovebirds something. Uh -huh. I stand behind every contract I make. So you take along this contract, and once you've had a look at the place and decide it's for you, then you mail a copy back to me. I'm sure that isn't one bit I necessary. I think that's just about as good a deal as we can ask for. So, uh, the keys, please. Oh, yes, sir. Here you are. Thank you. And good luck. While Henry and Lucy get ready to make the move to Bell Manor, we'll take a brief intermission and allow them to pick up their belongings. We'll start back again in three minutes. Until then, our cast will be available to chat with you using the Facebook Live chat feature during our live premiere.
Tucker Brewing Company has the largest outdoor beer garden in Georgia since 2017. They have event space that is both family and pet friendly with food and beers that are German inspired and honor their southern roots. They are available for safe dine-in at their beer garden or for takeout. Their new hours of operation can be found on their website. Tucker Brewing Company is located at 2003 South Bibb Drive in Tucker, Georgia. You can call them at 833-752-2400 and visit them on social media and their website at tuckerbrewing.com. Now we return to Henry and Lucy as they settle in in their new house on the outskirts of Bell Manor. I'm glad it's hooked up. Now we can invite some of our friends up here to come see us. Is it? Oh, I think I got it here. Let's see. Oh. Okay. Hello. But don't invite anybody up here yet. Not till we're settled, okay? Don't worry. Hello. Who is it, Henry? I wish I. Hello. Hello. Number, please. What? I said, number, please. Yeah, 
I mean, I heard you, but... No, this phone just rang. Why? Did you call us? No, I did not, sir. Are you sure about that? Of course I am, sir. Oh, um... Okay. Sorry. Who was it, Henry? It was nothing. It was, it was nobody. I, I think the operator must have rung us by mistake. Oh. Well, then, will you help me with these drapes, please? Okay. All right. Hold everything. I hope somebody's actually there this time. Hello? Hello? All right. Hello? Number, please. <laughs> Number, please? No, operator, this phone just rang again. You must be mistaken, sir. I did not ring you. Well, you must have. Somebody called us. My wife and I both heard the phone ring. Well, there's no call for you on the switchboard, sir. Then why did you call us? I did not call you, sir. Okay. 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 <laughs> there was nobody there again, was there? Uh, no, nobody but the, the operator. And this crazy little weird, I don't know. Well, that's very strange. Yeah, strange. Real funny. Mm -hmm. But it isn't funny this time. Hello? Henry. Hello? Henry, Henry, Henry. All right, what's Henry. going on? What's the gag here, huh? Hello? Hello, who's there? Hello? Number, please. <laughs> All right, operator, don't tell me you didn't ring this phone again. I'm sorry, but I did not, sir. Well, I'm sorry too, but you must have. This phone rang just now, and it rang before. My wife and I both heard it. I am very sorry, sir, but you must be mistaken. <laughs> Is that so? It could only have rung through this switchboard, and I am on duty alone here, and I did not ring you. And now, if you will excuse me, sir, I have another call to handle. You know, all I know is somebody around here, and it isn't me, is being a real mu- oh. Son of a- Who does she think she is hanging up on me like that? Now, wait a minute. Losing your temper won't help. Now you wait a minute. Hello? Hello? Get out. What, uh, Get what's out. the gag here, huh? Get out. Who's there? Get out. Who's there? Get out. Operator? Get Hello? Out. No, th this is crazy. What is? What is it, Henry? Tell me. Nothing. It's just. Somebody playing a crazy prank or something, but... A prank? Yeah, yeah. But I've had enough of it. Pulling this out of the wall. Uh, Henry! <laughs> yeah. With the cord out of the wall, it won't happen again because it can't happen again. No. No. Is right. Henry! I didn't. We, we, we just thought we heard it. No. No, that, that isn't so. It has to be. You and I know it. You were hearing things before on the phone, weren't you? Weren't you, Henry? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I heard something, but it was just a lot of laughing and chattering and, and these screwy little... Uh, and there was your voice. Uh, well, not your voice, but like a woman's voice. And But don't you see? Don't you think this is just some kind of crazy prank or something? 
That, that's all it is, that neighborhood kids. And maybe we're being punked. Uh, no, no, Henry, I'm afraid not. Well, what else could it be? Some of your supernatural spirit friends, I suppose. Yes. Lucy, no, no, that is ridiculous. No, Henry, you must listen to me. No, this is ridiculous. This is utterly ridiculous. You said you heard a woman's voice. You said you heard my voice, Henry. Lucy, forget it. We're overwhelmed, we're excited from all of the moving, and that's all this is. I wish I could believe you. It has to be. It's the only possible explanation for... No, Henry... Lucy, just... It's the doorbell. It's the doorbell, okay. Henry, don't, don't answer it. It's a bell that actually makes sense for a change. But what if it's... Lucy, just take it easy. Hello? Huh? Henry, please, dear. There was no one there. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure there was no one there. Then it's a warning. We have to get out of here. Lucy. We, we need to leave now. No, no, no. Uh -uh. No, please listen to me. You know what it means to us, this house. I'm going to find out what it means. Hello? Hello? Who's there? What's going on, huh? Who's out there? Now, now do you believe me? No! Were there any wet footprints on the porch? No, there wasn't any wet footprints on the porch. There wasn't any dry footprints on the porch. There wasn't nothing. Then it's a warning. We have to get out of here. We have to leave. <laughs> no, Lucy, no. We have to get out of here now, or something terrible is going to happen to us. Why? Because of the telephone? Because some crazy voice on the phone said we should get out? Is that what it said? <laughs> then we have to go. Because this, this place is haunted. It's full of evil, evil spirits. That's why the phone rang and the doorbell rang. There's some evil, evil spirit. This is some practical joker. That's all it is. No. That's why the price was so low. No one will stay here. And that's why the agent was so startled when you told her that I'm psychic. Uh, Lucy. I am. I must be. I, in this place, there's something terrible in this place. I can feel it. No, I say you let your crazy ideas go too far. Please, please listen. And I'm not about to let a bunch of superstitious hogwash just... Me? Yeah, I've had about enough of it. I'm gonna tear that thing off the wall. Right off the wall! Henry! There. There, look. It's off. Now, Lucy, listen. Please, please, you listen. You're only losing your temper, refusing to see what this really means. <laughs> this is a storm. There's electricity all through these wires. That's all this is. No! Yeah, th these long telephone lines out here, you know, all the electricity and the lightning, that, that's all that's done all this. And the voices before, could you explain them? Yeah, yeah, I can. You just, these country telephone lines get crossed up all the time. That's all it was. No, no, you're wrong. I'm begging you, please, Henry, let's get out of here, let's go. No! Here you are, Mr. and Mrs. Fielding, room 313. I'll just set this bag here. There you are, sir. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, uh, here you go, sir. Thank you, sir. Anything else you'd like? Maybe from room service or something else? 
No. No, that'll be all. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, the telephone is right there on the night table if you want it. No, no, we... Just, please. Yes, sir. Oh, if you'd like a little news and music, I could put on this television for you. Fine. It takes a few seconds to warm up. I don't know how good it'll be, though, after that big storm we had. It's fine. Well... Good night, sir. Good night. You feel better, honey? Thank you. I feel much safer now. Lucy, I just... I'm just worried we really lost our heads back there. But with the storm and... and Moving and being overwhelmed, and we were just... A weird accident out in Bell Manor. A house was struck by lightning. At this moment, both local and Dorchester County police are making every effort to locate a Mr. and Mrs. Henry Fielding. Hey, what's this? According to our reports, they were the new owner of a small home on the outskirts on Bell Manor when the lightning struck. During heavy rain and thunderstorm a few Listen. moments ago, Fortunately, there was no fire, nor were any other homes in the area affected. But that single bolt of lightning struck the fielding home with such force to completely demolish the living room. A neighbor had reported, seeing lights on, people moving only a few minutes before. However, no signs of either them or their car has been found at the scene. And it's barely possible that they left before the lightning struck. Henry? This has not been confirmed. If they did leave, whatever their reason, we can only say it was indeed providential that they weren't at the home when the catastrophe occurred. Hold me close. If anyone has any information to the whereabouts of Mr. and Mrs. Henry Fielding, please notify the station or the Dorchester County Police. Good Lord. Henry? I know. The next time you feel the inexplicable urge to do something, maybe you will pause and evaluate if that's your guardian angel or something else more sinister. We hope you enjoyed Main Street Theater's presentation of Bell Manor. While our main stage performances are on hold until we can safely meet again, we are committed to providing theatrical opportunities for Tucker and Greater Atlanta audiences. If you are interested in being in one of our upcoming productions, we invite you to follow us on all social media and on our website where you'll find information about auditions for upcoming shows. Become part of our Lamplighter Circle by giving a tax-exempt donation today on our website at MainStreetTheater.org. Thank you for watching Socially Distant Main Street Mysteries. Until next time.